Como News presents Ambulances. Russian paramedic fired over sick victim selfies. As we all know from watching live league videos, Russian roads can be extremely dangerous, so one would imagine being a paramedic is a pretty grim occupation. But even that is no excuse for the kind of callous behavior shown by Tatyana Kulikova, a paramedic in the Russian city of Kirov, who took a series of sick selfies with injured patients and posted them online. One of the pictures shows the heartless Kulikova giving an injured man the middle finger, with the caption reading, Another moron. While another picture titled How I Hate My Job shows her sticking up two fingers to a heart attack patient. Well, hate it no longer, Tatiana, cuz you're fired. Ambulance drone to save heart attack patients within minutes. Dubbing it, quote, ambulance drone, a student at a Dutch university has developed a flying defibrillator that can respond within minutes after a heart attack sets in. The ambulance drone is equipped with a camera and a GPS navigation system. Powered by six propellers, the drone can reach a maximum speed of 100 km per hour. When someone suffers a heart attack, bystanders can call an emergency hotline and an ambulance drone is next dispatched. Using a camera mounted on the drone, a staffer can then instruct bystanders to attach the defibrillator to the patient. The drone can transport the device to someone in need inside a 12 km zone within one minute, significantly increasing the survival rate of patients. Apart from the defibrillator, the developer hopes that the drone will be able to carry other medical supplies, such as oxygen masks and insulin injections. The developer aims to create an ambulance drone network in the Netherlands within five years. Ambulance drone could help save lives faster. A Texas-based design firm has illustrated its idea for an ambulance drone, which could help transport patients faster and more efficiently than regular ambulances or helicopters. The ambulance drone is modeled after a standard quadcopter. It is roughly the size of a compact car. The drone can follow a GPS signal or be controlled by a pilot. It is able to travel above traffic and other obstacles on the ground, allowing the drone to arrive at its destination faster than regular ambulances. Given its relatively small size, the drone is able to land almost anywhere. There is enough space inside for one patient and a medical worker. It can either travel on autopilot or be controlled by a pilot remotely in the event of difficult takeoffs and landings. A single pilot can also control an entire fleet of ambulance drones remotely. Although the company believes the ambulance drone is a feasible concept, it admits the cost for each device could be in the million dollar range. Police chief boinks in an ambulance, but whistleblower gets sacked. Officer Joshua Terrell tried to catch police chief Larry Burns having sex inside of an ambulance on city property because he wanted to sabotage his run for magistrate judge. Jal, New Mexico, population 2096, is right on the southeast border with Texas. The spirit of the Wild West is alive and well here, and sometimes things are done a little bit differently. Officer Terrell doesn't care too much for his boss, Chief Burns probably because he abuses certain powers. So, he sets a trap to catch the chief in a very precarious position. However, instead of taking the goods straight to the city manager, Bob Gallagher, he releases the steamy rendezvous to the local media. The investigation concluded that while the sexy interlude was an error of judgment, Chief Burns can keep his job because he had access to the area since he also serves as head of the paramedic division. Officer Terrell, on the other hand, violated several rules in gaining access to the area where he stashed a camera, and he was relieved of duty. UK Ebola patient William Pooley moved in special quarantine plane. The first British national to contract Ebola in West Africa arrived in London on Sunday for treatment. 
William Pooley, a 29-year-old volunteer nurse, was evacuated back to the UK after testing positive for the deadly virus while serving in Sierra Leone. Patients infected with the virus are flown in quarantine planes, outfitted with an aeromedical biological containment system. The tent-like plastic apparatus uses a HEPA-filtered device that keeps pathogens from entering the cabin by creating negative air pressure. Medical staffers are fully equipped with PVC coveralls with separate hoods, vinyl boots, three pairs of gloves and a special filtered respirator. Upon landing, patients are placed in a bubble stretcher equipped with negative air pressure ventilation. Built-in gloves on both sides of the chamber allow medical workers to tend to the patients from the outside. Patients are then transported to an isolation unit where doctors pay close attention to their respiratory system and vital organs, including the liver and kidneys. Pooley is being treated at the Royal Free Hospital in Hampstead, London. He is the first confirmed Briton to have contracted the virus during the recent outbreak. Scooter Rider ignores siren and gets T-boned by ambulance. Okay, everybody, today's lesson is about what happens if you don't yield to emergency vehicles. This female scooter rider ignored the sirens and got T-boned by an ambulance. The whole incident was caught in camera in Yunlin County, Taiwan last Saturday. The accident happened as the ambulance was transporting a patient to a nursing home. Suddenly, an 18-year-old scooter rider surnamed Huang drove across the intersection and got smacked by the ambulance. Her scooter got stuck on the front bumper of the ambulance and his exhaust pipe was smashed. Huang was taken to hospital by her older brother after he arrived at the scene and she was treated for minor injuries to her legs. Fortunately, the patient in the ambulance wasn't in a critical condition. Police said the ambulance was driving legally with its siren on, but strangely, Taiwanese police are still saying the ambulance driver is partly responsible for the accident. Does it make sense that the ambulance driver should have to pay for the recklessness of a scooter rider? Leave your thoughts in the comments. Four dead after medical helicopter crashes in California. Four people died when a medical helicopter crashed on its way to hospital in Southern California on Thursday. The air ambulance was traveling with four people on board from Porterville Airport to San Joaquin Community Hospital in Bakersfield, a 10-minute flight. There was dense fog and heavy rain in an area with overhead power lines. At around 7.30 p.m., after there was no contact with the helicopter for 30 minutes, the search began. It took about two hours to find the helicopter debris in a rural area of mostly orchards near the town of McFarland. There were no survivors. A patient, a pilot, a flight nurse, and a flight paramedic died in the incident. The cause of the crash is still unknown. English paramedics dump body of 32-year-old man by trash can. Paramedics working for the East of England Ambulance Service were in such a hurry to leave work on time that they reportedly abandoned the body of a 32-year-old man in this ambulance garage for the next shift to deal with. Around 5.30 a.m., paramedics got the call that a local plumber had collapsed outside of a fire station. They arrived to find the man deceased and loaded the body into the ambulance. But the responders were coming to the end of their night shift, and the closest mortuary was at a hospital in Cambridge, about 24 miles away. So they opted instead to return to their ambulance station and dump the body next to the trash. It reportedly took more than an hour for the next crew to arrive and deal with the body. This is the second recent embarrassment for ambulance crew chief Dr. Anthony Marsh, who was ridiculed in August for spending $29,000 in taxpayer money on cab fares. Marsh issued an apology, but refused to confirm any details of the incident. Man loses control of stolen ambulance, flips it on highway. Insane dash cam video shows a patient who had escaped a Chicago hospital driving a stolen ambulance before crashing it into a truck along a Wisconsin highway on Monday. Despite being strapped down to a gurney and guarded by five security guards, Michael Buckner somehow broke free of his restraints and took off with an ambulance. The video starts off more than 100 miles into the 23-year-old's crazy adventure with him driving down a Wisconsin highway before he drifts into another lane colliding with an 18-wheeler. Buckner is seen losing control as the emergency vehicle tumbles on its side, sending sparks flying everywhere. 
The near-death experience apparently wasn't enough for Buckner to call it quits, though, and after totaling the ambulance, he allegedly stole another vehicle after a good Samaritan pulled over to help victims of the overturned wreck. Thankfully, though, police eventually caught up to Buckner, who they claim has no priors, yeah, right, before he could cause any more damage. An Indiana University freshman has died after falling down a flight of stairs at an off-campus house party on Friday, August 23. Friends waited more than six hours before calling for help. 19-year-old Rachel Feig and friends were partying at a home in Bloomington on Thursday night. The drinks were flowing freely. Friends said Feig took a nasty fall down the basement stairs sometime after 1 a.m., Partygoers helped her up and took her to another part of the house. An unresponsive Feig was laid out and left alone as friends thought she'd simply passed out. But more than six hours went by and she didn't come to. Police were called just before 8am. They found Feig unconscious and not breathing. It was too late. Feig suffered a head injury which left her brain dead. Doctors removed her life support and she passed away surrounded by family and friends. Feig was due to begin her pre-nursing classes this week. Classmates appealed for people to educate themselves about Indiana's new Lifeline law, which provides legal protection for people who report an alcohol-related emergency, even if they were drinking underage. Stockholm tests new ambulance warning system. Accidents involving ambulances and some modern vehicles are on the rise in Sweden. This is because some cars are so well insulated against noise that the drivers can't hear the emergency sirens until it's too late. In response, ambulances in the country's capital city are now testing a new emergency warning system. Stockholm ambulances are trialing a system that emits an FM radio signal, which is picked up by vehicles with a radio data system. Drivers own stereo systems then alert them to slow down and make space for an approaching ambulance. The system interrupts all audio playback inside vehicles with a voice announcement about the presence of an ambulance nearby. The announcement is accompanied by a text message on the stereo tuner's display. According to the system developers, the optimal warning time for drivers is 10 to 15 seconds. The developers say the system reaches two-thirds of vehicles on the road and can also warn them of accidents ahead. The system calculates the speed of traffic to anticipate how far ahead warning signals need to be sent. For example, on a highway, the signal will be broadcast earlier than in slow-moving city traffic. The developers say the system will enhance accessibility for first responders, improve road safety, and make life a whole lot easier for ambulance drivers. If you're interested in how not to get home from the police station after being arrested and given a citation for drinking in public, then 33-year-old Arizona man Cesar Garcia is your man. Garcia was arrested around 10.45 a.m. on Sunday for drinking a beer inside Fry's grocery store in Chandler. He was processed at the Chandler Police Department and given a ticket before being released. Apparently, Garcia didn't feel like walking home, so he did what any normal person would do and stole an ambulance that happened to be in the lot. Police traced the van through GPS and alerted the force in Tempe that Garcia was on his way. When they tried to stop Garcia, he took off and drove to his house in Guadalupe. Garcia eventually made it home, but so did the Tempe police, who arrested Garcia for the second time that day. Garcia was charged with felony motor vehicle theft, two counts of aggravated assault on a police officer, resisting arrest, felony flight, and aggravated DUI. 